Hi, I'm Ranjit. I'm a design computing student at University of Washington. And in this video, I'll tell you about the pipe. The pipe is a, a the purpose of the pipe is to communicate geometry between different design applications, like modeling and design applications. Uh, one obvious way to communicate geometry between applications is to export the geometry into a mutually common file format and then import it into your target application. But if your design workflow is very iterative and if you go through lots of options and changes, that export import routine can get really tedious and cumbersome. So the pipe tries to make that a little bit easier and simpler. So I'll show you how the pipe works and how to use it. And if you like it, you can download it for yourself and give it a try. So I have an instance of Rhino running here. OK, before we go any further, as of now, I've written pipe extensions for four applications, Grasshopper, Rhino, uh, Revit, and Dynamo. Uh, I'm working on, I guess, other applications. I, I can't really think of any other, but this is the four that I start of, started with. So I have an instance of Rhino running here with Grasshopper, and there's this three pieces of geometry, this polyline, this NURBS curve, and this mesh, just arbitrary geometry that I'll, I'm going to use to show how to send geometry over to another application. So to send the geometry, I will search for a sender component. When you install the pipe plugin for Grasshopper, it comes with two components, one to send the data and another to receive the data. So when you create a new sender component, it's initialized with a random nickname. I will go ahead and change that to something smaller, like my type name, anything. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a string. And this nickname, it, it has to be a string. and it's actually important, which you will understand in just a second. So to send my data over, I'll start with this polyline. I'll just plug in the component into the pipe sender. It's just waiting for listener. Now, I'll switch over to Dynamo. OK, I have something else going on here. Let me clear this stuff out. OK. So uh, when you install the uh, pipe for Dynamo library, I guess you import a library into Dynamo, which is a DLL file. When you do that, it comes with two components, one component to pull data from the pipe, another to push the data to the pipe. And this is the pull from pipe component. And as input, it's asking for a pipe identifier. So uh, this is where that nickname comes in. This nickname that we provided is the unique identifier for our pipe. So uh, sorry about that. I mean to, didn't mean to open Revit, but yeah. So this component needs to know which pipe to get the data from. So let's type the same name here, my pipe name, and plug that in. And there's our polyline. Uh, so to, to demonstrate how this makes iteration easy, like edits and iterations easy, let's say somebody else is working on this grasshopper definition and they're editing the model, editing the geometry. So I'll create a move component, plug in the polyline to the move component. Now the geometry is translated along the z-axis and I'll plug in the output of the move component uh, into the pipe sender. I'll switch back to Dynamo. And now all I need to do is trigger a recompute of the pull from pipe component. So I'll just plug this string back in. And the geometry is now updated. Uh, we got the latest version of the geometry. 
So the, the way like, I'm going to describe how this worked just now. So what the grasshopper component did is to take this geometry and put, put it in computer's memory. And Dy Dynamo looked in computer's memory for geometry and fetched it from there and showed it to you in the viewport. And Dynamo knew where to look because of the unique identifier that we provided. Uh, it has to be the same on both ends, but it can be any string. So there's no additional like infrastructure. There's no server, nothing. It's all running on a single computer using the computer's memory as a medium of exchange. Now, sometimes you might uh, have to do this across different machines. Grasshopper instance might be running on one machine and somebody else could be working on Dynamo on a different machine. You can still use pipe for that situation, but you'd have to have a server as an, an... so for this demo i prepared a small uh, php script uh, that can send and receive data so all i'm going to do is instead of typing a unique string i'm going to type in a valid url I i'm just going to paste it actually so pasted that string now it says data posted to the url so i can switch over to dynamo and put the same URL into the identifier input and it will get the data from the server, not computer's memory this time. It's getting it from the server. But since the same since it's the same geometry, you won't notice the difference. So uh, let me try this NURBS curve instead. I'll plug the NURBS curve into this URL, the pipe sender component. And I'll just type I paste the same URL here too. And we have our NURBS curve, the, the same NURBS curve in Dynamo. And let's say somebody's editing this NURBS curve in Rhino and they want the curve to go that way, whatever, arbitrary edit. So as you can see, I just edited the NURBS curve and then all I have to do is switch back to Dynamo and trigger a recompute. So there it is, our NURBS curve is updated. Uh, so yeah, it, when a design is going through lots of iterations, the pipe is really convenient because you don't have to keep track of everything and then update everything manually. You just have to trigger a recompute and it works. And as I said earlier, uh, I've written pipe plugins for uh, Grasshopper, Rhino, Revit, and Dynamo. So I just showed getting data from Grasshopper to Dynamo. It works the other way from Dynamo back to Grasshopper. And you can send data from and to any of these any two of these four applications. So you can send data from Grasshopper to Revit, Revit to Dynamo, Revit to Rhino, whatever combination. Uh, it works for all of them. I mean, you can, if you want, you can send data from Grasshopper to Rhino, but it'd be stupid if it was the same instance of the Rhino that was running Grasshopper because you'd effectively be baking the geometry. That's like the most, that's like it, that's dumb. <laughs> you can just instead bake the geometry. But if the Rhino instance is running on a different computer or somebody else is working on it, then it makes sense. You can use pipe to communicate data. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be different applications. If two people are working on two different grasshopper definitions and there's a connecting piece, you can use the pipe. So it can be the same applications, but two different instances. Uh, Okay, so let's try this mesh. I will plug in this mesh into the same sender component, switch back to Dynamo, trigger a recompute, and there's our mesh. Wait, what? Okay, sorry. Recompute, and there's our mesh. I, I disconnected these two components by accident there. Uh, it, 
You know, it looks like a bird's head or something. Uh, okay. Now I will show you how to use the pipe to communicate data between Rhino and Revit. You can do Grasshopper and Revit too, but since I already showed the Grasshopper components, I'll show Rhino and Revit now. Okay, so let me okay, let me hide this geometry for a second. I don't need that right now. And the, I'll switch to the front view. Hmm. I wonder what that sound is. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'll just draw this line. This is in the vertical plane because we're in the front view. And I'll use the pipe plugin for Rhino to send this line over to uh, Revit. So when you install the pipe plugin for Rhino, it comes with uh, two new commands. One is pipe pull and one is pipe push. Those two right there. So let's go ahead and select pipe push. Now it's asking for the unique identifier of the pipe. In this case, we'll, we'll let's send it to the same URL that we sent it to earlier. Oh, sorry. I, I was trying to copy the URL from another window. Okay, so I'll just play or paste the URL here. Now it's asking me to select the objects to be pushed through the pipe. So I'll select this line and hit enter and it's done. The line is sent to that URL. Now I'll switch to Revit. Okay, I probably should have opened this file beforehand, but this makes the video a little bit longer. Okay. So if you install the Revit add-in for the pipe, you will get this panel in the add-ins ribbon. So it, the text box in the middle is for the unique identifier of the pipe. The, the push button is to push the data to the pipe and pull button is to pull the data from the pipe. So I'll paste in the same URL in the text box and uh, just hit pipe pull. So there's our line. We're in plan view, but we sketched our line in, in elevation and the front view in Rhino. So let's go to south, south elevation. So that's our line that we sketched in Rhino. So, okay, let's go back to plan view. I'm going to make a wall. Okay, that's good. That's good enough. Uh, I'll go back to south elevation and I want to use this line to determine my walls profile. So let's edit the walls profile. And when I select this line, I want to make sure that the lock checkbox is checked. Then, you know, the sketch line locks to the, the green line from earlier. So let's just clean this up. So now that will be the profile of the wall. Okay, let's go to 3D. Okay, so this line is, the, the profile of the wall is logged, locked to this line. So if we move this line, the wall's profile will also change. So let's say we go back to our Rhino file. Maybe somebody else is working on this and they are editing this file. Maybe this line is driven by a grasshopper definition, whatever's the case. I'm gonna edit this uh, line, rotate it over to, uh, to slant it the other way. And I'm gonna do pipe push again. Same URL, same line. Okay, we're done pushing the line. Now I will click this pipe pull button in Revit once again that should update this line and that in turn will drive the geometry i mean that line is already driving the profile of the wall so that should in turn update the wall's profile automatically so i will do pipe pull so here revit add-in for pipe notice that you're getting the same type of geometry 
and the same number of it's not like you the second time you got like four curves instead of one you got the same number of geometry objects and they're all of the same type it's one curve so it's asking you whether you want to replace the curve with a new with a new one like delete the existing curve and add a new curve to the document update the geometry just keep the existing curve as is but update it to match the new curve or append new geometry don't mess with the existing curve just add the new curve to the file uh, so in this case i'll select update geometry so the curve will will not be deleted but its geometry will be updated to match the new one so i'll just select update geometry and the geometry of the line was updated and that in turn updated the profile of the wall because we locked those two lines earlier when we were sketching the profile so in this way you can actually drive your revit model you can drive your roof profiles or uh, your, your, you can drive your Revit, Revit families and Revit geometry using Grasshopper or Rhino. And obviously Dynamo, you don't need pipe to do that, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is how the pipe works. It currently supports four applications, Rhino, Revit, uh, Grasshopper, and Dynamo. And it currently supports, it doesn't support all types of geometry. It supports lines, nerves, curves, polylines, arcs, circular arcs, points, vectors, text, numbers, and meshes. Well, with the exception of Revit. Revit, uh, Revit doesn't support meshes. I, I'm, I'm working on it. It's, it's a work under progress. Uh, and I'm working on adding support for other data types like 3D nerve surfaces and extrusions and uh, other other types of geometry. Uh, if you like this functionality, it's really fast. Push from one side, pull from the other side. It's it's really convenient for iterative design workflows. If you like this, you can download the pipe uh, yourself and and try it. All the source code. Uh, Everything is on GitHub. Uh, you'll be able to find links in the description. And so, so earlier I explained two ways in which the pipe works. One is through the computer's memory, and another is by posting the data to a, a to a server, and that data is handled by a PHP script. That PHP script, that PHP code is also available uh, at the same in the same Git repository which I will link in the description. But let's say you want the pipe to work through a different medium of communication, not the computer's RAM, uh, not the internet, but some other uh, medium. You can do that. You can implement, you can come up with your own implementation of the pipe that uses the same data model. And it's really easy to do that. Uh, the, the pipe data model is uh, made to be very flexible and you know, it's easy to add functionality to it if you're a developer. So I'll be making a, another video, a second video uh, titled Pipe for Developers. And if you're a developer and if you want to develop your own implementation of the pipe by uh, inheriting from the, the, the current implementation of the pipe, I will explain how to do that in that second video, which should also be linked in the description. Bye.